Let's see, the other thing, uh, as already has been expressed, is our deep appreciation this time of year for our veterans and their service to us and our country. You have done service that allows us to worship here today. And there are some who have given the full sacrifice that are not with us today that allows us to worship here today. Let's pray together as we go to God's Word. Father, we thank you that we have the full freedom to come and worship you today. And Father, as we do so, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Touch, touch our hearts in our lives that we might more closely resemble you. We ask in Christ's precious name. Amen. It's always interesting in working on a message from week to week. Most of the time, it's centered solely around the exposition of a passage of Scripture. This time, it's centered in three points in time over this past week. The first point in time is when our church family gathered, about 40-plus of us, uh, Linda coordinated a station during the marathon. My alarm went off, and it did need to go off, about 5 o'clock Sunday morning. I was tempted to hit the cancel button and snooze, but I put my cap on and headed over and uh, passed out water at, uh, I think it was around 7. We were the second mile in, so it wasn't too long as hundreds of people went by. I sped forward through the week, spent Monday and Tuesday down at um, USC Long Beach, where I met with about 20 other uh, folks that were studying giving from a Christian standpoint and from a secular standpoint. I had the privilege of being there with our world leader, Dennis Carlson, and three other uh, conference leaders, and uh, learn more about giving and uh, the joy of that, the legacy piece. And sometime in the future, I'll share some details. On my way home each evening, I enjoyed the 405 for two and a half hours. <laughs> Stopped in Glendale on Monday night, and Tuesday night was especially joyful as I turned on the radio. What was Tuesday night? Oh, yes, that was the end of all of this chatter and stuff. Went by the ballot box, cast my ballot, and went home. Duly turned on the TV and stayed awake until about 10.30, in which I found some well-needed rest and didn't wake up until the middle of the night. I did have rest until that time. I am so glad we live in a land, a free land. Are you? I am. We have the privilege and freedom of voting. We have the equality of voice at the ballot box. But I must say, as I stood there, as I stood there, a bit, a bit in hesitancy, I reflected back for a few minutes just how vigorous and how passionate this discussion has been. At times very civil and at times very rancorous. Would you agree? And that's putting it mildly. And as I cast one of the last ballots, I thought my ballot probably won't count for much. But I said, okay, Lord, here I go. And I said a prayer, dropped the ink pen on the ballot, finished voting, put it in a sealed envelope, and I had done my civic duty. But when you reflect on the great freedom that we have, it's an amazing thing, isn't it? And it's a privilege. Now, in just a moment, I'm going to move through this because there's an aftermath 
to all of this as well, isn't there? Because for you see, you know the end of that decision. Half of us may be mildly pleased if we are, and half of us probably, if we reflect the general, pro- uh, the general population, are terribly troubled at the same time. So where is God in all of this, we might say? So I stood for a few moments at the ballot box, and I wondered, how in the world can we make such a difficult decision? Do you ever wonder that in life? Just are you doing the right thing? There's an old story in 1 Kings chapter 3, 16 through 28. Solomon makes a difficult decision. How, how can it be? How can he figure it out? As two women appear before him, before him in verse 16, one day two women came to King Solomon And one of them said, Your Majesty, this woman and I live in the same house. And not long ago, my baby was born at home. And three days later, her baby was born. Nobody else was there with us. One night, while we were all asleep, she rolled over on her baby. And he died. Then while I was asleep, King, she got up and took my son out of my bed. And she put her... She put him in her bed. Then she put her dead baby next to me. In the morning when she got up to feed my son, I saw, when I got up to feed my son, I saw he was dead. But when I looked at him in the light, I knew he wasn't my son. No. The other woman shouted, He was not your son. My baby is alive. The dead baby is yours, the first woman yelled. Mine is alive. And they argued back and forth in front of Solomon until he said, Both of you say this baby is yours. Someone bring me a sword. The sword was brought. And Solomon ordered, Cut the baby in half. That way each of you can have part of him. And of course, you know the story well. Please don't kill my son, the baby's mother screamed. Your majesty, I love him very much, but give him to her. Just don't kill him. The other woman shouted out, part him in two and I'll take the half and she can have the other half. Solomon said, don't kill the baby. Then he pointed to the first woman. She is the real mother. Give the baby to her. Everyone in Israel was amazed when they heard how Solomon had made his decision. And they realized that God had given him wisdom to judge fairly. And that story echoed in my mind as I lowered that ink pen to the ballot, full aware that somebody following behind me would put that ink pen in another piece of the ballot. The fact that we may disagree does not diminish the cost that has been paid for the freedom that we enjoy. More important than the outcome is the right that we have. Do you believe that, friends? That Tuesday gave way to Friday. And we celebrate Friday as what? Veterans Day. Now, if if you were channel surfing on Tuesday night, Wednesday, or Thursday. I hope it was forever 
short in your channel surfing. Because on Friday, we realized the true cost of the right to vote and the freedom to vote. And it was through the costly sacrifices of your sons, your daughters, your fathers, some of you, your mothers. And we think of those who have lost their lives most recently. But if you go back in the history of this blessed nation, we had a civil war in our nation that claimed 650,000 to 700,000 soldiers' lives. Did you catch that? Oh, more lives than were lost in World War I and World War II combined. Over a million people perished. What was the issue back then? What was the issue back then? Slavery. A million people died that all men and women might live free. In a free nation, the right to vote, the right to equality, regardless of background, regardless of whether you're a man or woman, tall or short, skinny or heavy, green eyes or brown eyes. A right to live free, a moral decision. Now that's something to give your life for. Can you say amen? When we are living and we are making moral decisions, we stand, for, we stand firm and we stand resolute based on principle. When we make decisions about who should serve where, you may feel that's a moral principle, but it's probably more a preference. There's a lot of things to get upset about. There may be a lot of things to argue about. But there are those who gave their lives that we might enjoy the freedoms that we have. Freedoms to vote. Freedoms to live according to the dictates of our conscience. Desmond Doss is a veteran, well-known veteran, who participated in World War II, conscientious objector. Recently, his life has been portrayed on the big screen in Hacksaw Ridge. Without carrying a gun, he determined that he would give life in the midst of the battles that he found himself. His cry was, just one more, Lord, as over 75 people, as an unarmed combat medic, he rescued those who were wounded and dying. But yet, that Friday isn't the last Friday. I go back to another Friday. You see, there was a Friday long ago when the sacrifice of Christ on the cross brought freedom to us. Freedom from sin, freedom of forgiveness, freedom of cleansing, freedom of reconciliation, freedom to live. I need to go back for just a half a second. I was walking down the hall and I bumped into somebody. It was on Wednesday morning. And I said, how are you doing? And in their eyes, I could see some, what I call, shell shock after Tuesday. I talked to somebody else and they were just hardly, any words could come forth from their mouth to express their dissatisfaction. 
And I scratched my head and I said, Lord, just help me to take them somewhere from where they are to the bigger hope that they have in their heart of one day seeing Christ again. For you see, this nation is not necessarily what is going through, but it is God's people that are going through. This nation may be temporal, but God's people will go through to the end to listen to the pain in their, uh, the pain that they are expressing, the disappointment that they are conveying is part of the process of bringing hope and healing to those that we come in contact with. Have you seen them? Maybe sitting next to you, maybe in your own household, maybe things you don't talk about quite yet because you're not quite there yet. There's the expression post-election stress disorder. You've heard the other one, PTSD, post-traumatic stress syndrome, or PTDS, whichever it is. But post-election, many have faced this. So as we come alongside, let's come alongside them very gently to listen to share in their concerns, and then to share the bigger picture that we live in a country of freedom. And the Sabbath gives us a time to remember, to rest, to reflect, to renew, and to uh, to rejoice in the freedom that we find in Christ. And so too are scriptures of today. Recall that freedom for us that we have that we can share with others. For Galatians says, for freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm with him. Live as people who are free, not using your freedom to cover up evil, but living as servants of God. Now the Spirit, 2 Corinthians, calls out, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Freedom. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use that freedom as an opportunity of the flesh, but through love serve one another, prefer one another, listen to one another, carry the burdens of each other, Galatians says. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who were bound. We look back on a Friday so long ago and on this Sabbath, we find a time of rest and remembrance of that day. But now you are free from the power of sin. You have become the servant of God. Your life is set apart for godlike living. The end is life that lasts, what does the scripture say? Forever. We rest on this Sabbath day. And we remember that as Christ died on the cross on Friday, Sabbath came. A time when he rested in the tomb. A time when he promised his presence. A time he is given to us to remember to keep holy. A time which we remember his sacrifice and His promise. A time which we rejoice because of His sacrifice, we have freedom that far surpasses the freedom that we have in this land. We have freedom from guilt. We have freedom from carrying the shackles of the things that bind us to sinful ways. We have freedom to become all that He wants us to become through His power. Are you pleased that you have that freedom today, friend? Can you say amen? Amen. 
But it comes at a cost. When you remember the cost, the freedom is more precious. When you live under the freedom, the, under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ in that freedom, you can, pro, you can go forth proclaiming the magnificence of His glory and His grace. May this Sabbath, be a Sabbath of remembrance of the cost of the rest we find in Christ and the future that is promised that one day it won't be a veteran coming for us. One day it won't be someone we loved, but one day it will be the son of the king who was nailed on that cross, who paid the price, and he's coming to welcome you. He's coming to welcome me to go with him before the throne of grace. I long for that day. How about you? When you look and go into the world of darkness and hopelessness, and despair and wondering. Share with them the hope that burns within your heart. Share with them the rest that you find in Christ. Share with them the forgiveness that comes through the King's Son as He paid the price for sin and forgiveness on the cross that day. And He fills our life with his goodness and his blessings. May we be filled with that rest and restoration this day in fullness that we might, by grace, go forth from this place, connected with him, that we might connect with one another through Christ's precious name. Amen.